This is Thrivecasters. Thriving, not surviving. Tackling youth issues that matter to you. Uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a musician and a poet and a songwriter. I'm based in Birmingham, mm -hmm. but I'm from London. And I'm working with Forever 15 over with a lot of youth charity projects to help the poor and deprived communities in Antwerp and in Birmingham. And what about you, Michelle? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Michelle, founder of Forever 15. I founded Forever 15 three years ago now. Um, and we've done quite a lot for the youth and community, but there's still a lot more that we can do. Um, I built it up from my own personal life and background through some of the trauma that I went through as a child growing up. Tell us about your life. You said talk, you had trauma, you've been through some stuff. From young, I was 15 and I got kidnapped. Kidnapped? I was, yeah, kidnapped. I was kidnapped, I was held in a flat for seven weeks. I was beaten, black and blue, broken nose, broken arms, broken ribs. Eventually I was dumped outside the hospital, left for dead, which then Obviously, I survived. It left me with a lot of trauma. I was mm. put into a women's refuge at the age of 15 and a half. I was the youngest person in the whole of the West Midlands to end up in a domestic violence unit mm -hmm. at such a young age. Um, that then eventually, when I moved out of there, I moved into a normal youth hostel. Um, then my life just mm. went even more down the path. It just spiraled out of control, um, mixed with gang members. Mm seen shootings, seen stabbings, was shot at myself. My baby father nearly lost his life. I was looking 10 years in prison through the associates that I mixed with, but them associates was like my protection back then. Yeah. Now I'm older, I see that it wasn't protection. And you know, I was actually exploited as a young child, as a young female. How have you been able to handle that on a mental level? Because a lot of people that would go through that situation wouldn't be good going forward in life. How were you able to like overcome it mentally? There's still days when it does. It's always in my mind, don't get me wrong, but you learn to put it to the back of your mind yeah. because life has to go on. If I let what happened to me take over my life, it will destroy me. And then I'm never going to be me. I'm never going to be able to be the person that I want to be, yeah. you know, and I'm a mum. So I have to let that stay to the back of my mind. But now I use it as a life tool to teach other kids about my experiences and to try and stop them from heading down that road, you know. But it's a trauma that I'll always live with. But like I say, time goes on and we just have to learn to get over it. I never had no counselling for it. You know, sometimes I wish maybe I should have. Mm. But we just deal with it the best I can. But that's why I try to speak about it the most now because I find talking about my experience mm. and what I went through is a healing journey for me mm. personally. Would you say it was all solely you that was able to like pick yourself up and make a change? Because a lot of people that would go through a situation like that, they would kind of just let it be define them and let and just continue life going downwards. Like what was able to pick you up? I did end up going further down. Like I say, I ended up mixing with gang members, you mm. know, um, I was looking 10 years for firearms and conspiracy to murder. Mm. Um, my kids was getting older. I had a son that ended up in this gang life. He's been stabbed, he's been shot. He's now serving 20 years in prison, you know? So as I got older and my kids was growing older, I wanted to come out of that life. I mm. moved away. I got myself into college, did education, came back, you know, but the area I came back to was still struggling. The youths are struggling there. And that's why I decided to come back. My son had got sentenced. We'd also lost Dejan, Keon, Seiku, you know, my daughter's cousin was murdered. In, in the last three years, I think we've lost about 12 kids in three years to knife and gun crime, which I know majority of these kids because I've got kids myself and their moms. So I put my experiences and my life and what I've gone through and with my son being in prison to try and teach the kids and give them better to do, to build up the communities, build up the kids and show them that this going to jail is not doing nothing. You earn a hundred thousand pounds, yeah? And you get sentenced to 20 years. Yeah. Did you know that equals that to 25 pound a day? Well, That's it. That's it. So these kids are going to jail, committing a crime, and what are you getting at the end of it? Nothing. Nothing. 
Mums are being left broken. We're either burying them or putting them in jail. And this is what we need to stop. I've buried kids, not my own kids, but I've buried my friend's kids. I see my son in a prison cell. He calls me almost every day. And you know, it's hard to know that my son's not coming out of jail till at least 2033. You know what I mean? And he's been in there three years already, mm. you know? So to live my life knowing that there's other kids that look up to, to, to these jail systems and people in jail thinking it's easy, it's not easy. Everybody in a jail cell calls home one day crying. You could be the toughest of the toughest, man. You miss home one day, you know? And kids don't realize this. And that's why myself and Ricky, you know, over the past, how long? We've done fun days, we've had football mm. matches with the police, yeah. we've got another one coming up, we're Maybe. looking towards getting the building mm -hmm. to be able to do some work with the kids, educate them and get them off the streets. We want to provide better for them because unless we work together as communities mm -hmm. and try and teach them better, when are they going to learn? Mm -hmm. You know, through my own experience and what we see on a daily basis, we need to do something as grown adults from my own personal experience, I don't want to see another female go down the road I went through. In 1992, what went, what I went through was not classed as exploitation. Mm. It was only the early 2000s when Bernardo's decided, no, this is exploitation. This is not just kids running away or being took away. Mm. This is exploitation, you know? So thankfully, 12, 14 years after it happened to me, it has been recognized now. So we do have authorities working to try and Stop these things happening. But kids are not listening to authorities, but they listen to people like me and Ricky mm -hmm. because we've lived it and we've seen it and we've gone through it. Mm. So this is why Forever 15 is just out here now doing what we can for the youth to teach them through our own lives mm -hmm. and to teach them better. From what I'm hearing, it seems like you have quite a proactive approach to tackling the whole knife crime and youth violence, which is, I'm not, I don't really see that a lot. Um, I can't, from my own experience, I can't say that I'm, I've had or shared what you've, what you've seen and been through. But I do know, like, as a young black individual, I do see that within the community, there is quite a lot of violence. And it's like, I feel like it's kind of, as time goes on, it's becoming more, like, glorified and glamorized. Like, it's people are, like, glorified. thinking it's, it's kind of like a call, like a trend. So from your own experiences, what do you think is, like, the main factors that are contributing to it? There is many main factors. One is poverty. Mm -hmm. And we're all going through a cost of living again now. So parents are struggling to put food on the tables, let alone put a pair of trainers on their feet. Mm -hmm. We all know society today shows our kids, if you're not dressed a certain way, you're not fitting in. So a lot of kids now are going out there committing crimes mm -hmm. to either put food on the mom's tables to help with the bills so they don't become homeless and their moms are not crying every night, not knowing where the next piece of food's coming from for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Or they're going out to go and buy these clothes, to fit in with everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big major thing. These retailers, they're putting big hundreds and thousands of pounds prices on clothing brands. And our kids want to be that. Our kids want to wear that. Mm -hmm. But we ain't got the money to do it. So they're going out there and doing it themselves. Mm -hmm. Stuck in a system. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. We've got drill music. I know like, you know, Music is music, but we've got more conscious music we're probably listening to. We've got people that are out here promoting videos, running up, shooting off guns, trap houses, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. What are you showing our kids? A quick way to make money, but you're not showing them the death and the jail system as well. Definitely. When you're making these videos, all of this jewellery you're wearing and these Lamborghinis, it's all hired. None of you lot don't own it. But our kids are not seeing this. Our kids are thinking, oh, these people have got all this and got all of that. No, they haven't. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's a big thing with the music industry. A lot of people need to stand up and cut back on the, the amount of violent contents that is put out there. You know, like... But you we, know what, yeah? In, the, in the, the celebrities or the music industry, a lot of the record labels, they, um, they, they, they give you assignments for you to add these things into mm -hmm. your music. You know, so it's not always the artist songs, it's, it's the, the labels artists. that are telling them to do For it. For them to be that. And if they rebel against it, then... Your career's over. You're you over. ain't getting nowhere. You know? And if, you you're, know? if you're not fortunate like Kanye West now and able to cancel the deal of Adidas over a tweet and these kind of things and then still generate money, hmm. 
you're you're tied into a system where your whole family and your whole structure is going to lose out because of your actions. Yeah. So they have no choice but to kind of portray that image towards the hip hop or drill or rap community. You know, and like, it's also down to social media as well, because we all know a lot of this violent content gets posted on Snapchat. You know, what I mean, Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, Instagram, not so much. They have kind of leveled it up. They see anything being posted and they're quick to yeah, take it down mm -hmm. and tell you you've got a violation. But we've got Snapchat, you know, what I mean, we've got TikTok. They're letting these videos go out there, mm -hmm. being circulated and shared and shared and shared and shared. And then we've got people that are losing their kids. That are seeing these videos of their last moments of their kids being killed. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? When are these social media outlets going to say, you know what? Enough is enough. We all know the level of violence in Jamaica has been crazy. Mm -hmm. To the point now where Jamaica's banned certain music's mm -hmm. being put out there. Mm -hmm. You can't be putting mm -hmm. out there gunshot music no more. Skelly Bank, Skelly Bank is done. In a way, I feel sorry for them because we all know Jamaica's a poor country. Music was making their country richer. Mm. But because of the way they've had to ban it now, because it's the level of violence and people are dying out in Jamaica, due to the the the, the music that's being put out there, is that what's going to happen in England? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Where music artists are not going to be able to put your music out there because you're putting too much violent content. Mm. I'm not saying don't do your music. Do your music, but cut out so much of the violence. Mm. You know what I mean? The kids don't need to be hearing it every single day when we've got a lot of kids growing up seeing it. You know what I mean? They don't need to hear it and see it. Sometimes, you know, it's good to be blind to certain things. Mm. When we was kids, we didn't have all this on the TV. Mm. You know, running up in a chat, blah, 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 blah. We but never had no, none no, of that no bullshit. Internet. You know internet. what I mean? We didn't have it. Yeah. You get me? So therefore, like, the levels of crime we had when we was growing up was not major like it is now because it was not really heard and promoted and put on the news yeah. as much. But you see, now every day it's in the media. It's on one platform or another or another or another. And we all know kids are smart. Kids mm. are not stupid. Do you know what I mean? Like, they can read just as well as us now. Mm. You know, and they understand things just as well as us. So the same time they're putting it out there to promote it, you've got us out here trying to prevent it. Mm. Because we want our kids to live and see another day. We're sick of burying them. I'm glad you touched up on the whole uh, music and within the industry and how it's kind of like essentially corrupting the youth. Obviously, everyone has their stories. You have them people that have had to do bad stuff in order to survive and they've come off the streets now. They've got an industry, they've made it and they're still talking about like badness and shooting the killers and stuff. And it's a thing where, say for example, a well-known artist dies and that celebrity knew them they'll be posting, oh, we need to do better as a, as a community, we need to do better as artists, and they'll go back to square one, talking about rapping and killing. And I feel like it's a, it's a systematic battle where you're, these, these companies, these social media platforms, they're still sharing it. They're not trying to help. Mm -hmm. It's down to us. Like It's down to the people involved to make that change. And what I don't like is how artists are out here showing sympathy, but they're not taking those necessary steps to make a change. If an artist who's talking about drilling and rapping, they said, you know what? We need to stop doing this. We need to change our message. And more artists follow. I feel like it takes one big yeah. artist to say that message for them to have that domino effect. It does. Mm -hmm. Even down to like the likes of people like, you know, we're all just saying about music. We've got boxers mm -hmm. as well. We've got footballers. We've got a lot of million billionaires mm -hmm. in this country alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, one of you, Tyson Fury's nephew, mm. cousin, was killed, yeah, mm. stabbed to death. Now, I personally thought when Tyson's own family was going through that, mm. Tyson would have took up a big stand against knife crime, you mm. know, and people might have listened. But it's like Tyson spoke about it once and it's been swept under the carpet. Mm. People need their voices to be out here and be heard. Do you know what I mean? We've got a few people that are, are a celebrity status, that have had gone through these things, but they don't let their voices be heard enough. Mm. Like they hear it for that split second and then it's gone. Mm. Instead of their voices constantly being out here, you know what I mean? Like we've had enough. We can't keep doing this. Duh, 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 duh. Mm. Be a bigger influence. You're influencing us all to watch your football, to listen to your music, to go and watch your boxing, you know, but you're not influencing our kids to do better. Show them how to get into boxing. Show them how to get into a studio. Show them how to get into football mm. instead of showing them how to kill each other. Mm. Build each other up. Do you know what I mean? Instead of showing each other the road life and how to die, 
show each other how to live. We've done a lot of work with the police because we're trying mm. to build back the community and build back the trust within the community. And, Even that was a big you know, step. Even that was, that was a, a massive step. thing, like, for us. <laughs> you understand? Like, yeah, you know, but it, it's step. like... Oh, wasn't easy. Even down to, to that, like, we've got officials that are not really out here helping us with the kids. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, just, we've got teachers. We've got schools and colleges that had just seen our kids as, yo, you've been naughty, let's kick them out. Mm -hmm. So then they left to the street. Mm -hmm. But that's where we're trying to step in. Come in. You know what I mean? And we're trying to say, yo, you've been kicked out of school, come with us. Mm -hmm. We'll teach you this, we'll teach you that, we'll teach you the other. Mm -hmm. Because the system's failing us all, but it takes us all to try and rebuild the system mm -hmm. and to try and put it all back in. Like we said, we didn't ever think we'd be like, kind of best friends with the police. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what Isn't I mean? It? Like, with our backgrounds. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, whoever thought me and him, two yeah. ex-gang affiliated, one used to be a drug dealer, one used to be clapping guns and whatever, yeah, end up playing football with the top police in Birmingham. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and we had the kids there and the police was there and it was amazing. Mm. Like, breaking down the stigmatisation and getting the police to see, not all of our kids are hood mm -hmm. hooligans. Just because you see them just a certain way. Some of them have got potential, you know, but we need to reach them and break down this cycle. And that's mm -hmm. what we aim to do. Mm -hmm. This year, we've done like fun days, a football match, mm -hmm. other little bits and bobs. Mm -hmm. But next Campers. year, we're coming back with a boom. We've got a Christmas Feed Seven Families for Christmas mm -hmm. this year. Probably no families are struggling. We don't mm -hmm. want the kids going out there, putting a turkey on their mom's table and getting locked up. Mm -hmm. So... We've actually trying to now provide seven families with mm -hmm. a Christmas meal and toys for their kids mm -hmm. because we're trying to prevent it any way we can. Mm -hmm. Next year, we're coming back with a bigger boom. We've got more fun days. Mm -hmm. We're hoping mm -hmm. to have our library sessions. And, and thank you to everyone that's supported in our hamper as well, that's tuned into our Instagram, that's locked onto the GoFundMe and sent as little as one yeah. pound, 10p, it could be 10 pound, it could be 20 pound, who cares? The fact that you've done that, Michelle's shown me and I've seen it. So thank you, thank you, and thank you to you guys, man. Yeah. Anyway. So basically, we're just trying to do what we can. Mm -hmm. Get these kids off the street, support the families, you know, because we all know when kids are being locked up and, and killed, mm -hmm. their mums are falling apart. And me being a mum that's lived through that, mm -hmm. I try and help them as much as we can as well. So, you know, next year it's about... Trying to build up more and get the kids off the road more. Yeah, you know, doing. like Ricky's doing his part with his poetry and we've roped him in for that. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. we're gonna do another football match with the police. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to join in, including you, T. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, oh, any of you guys it, wanna come it, and join it, in? Isn't it? Yeah, isn't come it and join in. Yes, because it, you know, it'll be a blast. Um, yeah, that's it. Going and we're gonna it. win this time. We're gonna mm -hmm. win. It shows the kids, the community. <laughs> other people we can do these things we yeah. can achieve the police are just like us out of their uniform mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. know what i mean take them out their uniform some of them have got hearts mm. some of them do care we know there's been a lot of corrupt police we're not going to deny that do you know what i mean but the ones that we've got to know and work with they're over proper. the last 12 months two years three years they've been amazing they're, proper stuff. they're trying to stop our kids dying i've mm. seen i've seen inspectors break down in tears mm. and i never thought i'd see that you know, mm. some of them are trying. They have still got a lot of mistakes mm. and there's still going to be mistakes made along the way. But they're working, but they're they're working. working on it. They're trying to right the wrongs and working with us, you know what I mean, has opened up their eyes a bit more mm. to see that it does take us all to come together. Because mm. if we don't come together, we're going to keep losing and losing and losing. The cycle mm. will just keep coming round. Mm. And you know what? Shout out Chantel as well. Yeah, Birmingham, Birmingham City, City Football, Football Club. Club. You hear me? Yeah. Without Chantel, that match would never have happened. Yeah. You know, like, Birmingham City like, Football Club, they, they supported sponsored us. They really and did. Immensely. We managed to go down there, look at the, the ground, and we went into the VIP mm. box, have you, Ricky? Oh, <laughs> man, it was amazing. And Chantel, she has more or less yeah, promised us some tickets for the kids to go and watch a game. Um, Everything. Shh. Too late. <laughs> and to go and show them the ground. Obviously, we know a lot of kids don't get to go and watch football. Mm -hmm. Tickets are expensive. Yeah, pricey. Very expensive. So, you know, like, that's something that we, we're aiming to do next year is get a couple of kids in the ground. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's 
another positive thing, get it? That's a big really? one. Yeah, that's, that's a, a massive one. one. 2023 massive. is going to be a movie. Massive. Yeah, it's a big one. And we are taking names down now for anybody that wants to come and join our next football tournament because we've got one in January mm -hmm. in Hansworth. So if anybody wants to come and join the streets versus the police, mm -hmm. let us know. How do you get the youth on board when that's being like shared? Because I know a lot, of your, a lot of young people, they find it a bit a bit funny when police are mentioned and it can be a deterrent sometimes. So how do you like... By doing fun activities like the football, like fun days, you know, like we, we do fun things with them and we make sure the police are involved. Because if the kids are seeing the police out of uniform, just mm. as a normal person like me and you sitting here having a conversation, that idea of them being a copper goes out yeah, the window. Yeah. They just see it as you're a normal person. Let's let's just play football. And then because it, they you know, know and then because they, the kids have got trust in me, yeah. and the police have got trust in me. Mm -hmm. So because the kids have got the trust in me, if I say to them, "Yo, this cop is all right," the kids are believing me. I'm not going to lead them down the garden path, and that's what they've got to know with me because of my life, what I've gone through, being ex gang affiliated, my son being in prison. The kids know if I'm willing to try and reel back and build with the police, let you come and do it with me. And so far, so good. It's working. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids are starting to, you know what I mean, do it. I also work on their stop and search scrutiny panel. So a lot of the kids know if you're being stopped and searched, mm. contact me, mate, because I'll go and sort it out for you because I view, review the body cams. Do you know what I mean? Like, So the kids know as well there's other little things I do. I'm not on the police side 100%, but I 50% back them in the things that they're doing now compared to what they were doing 12 months ago. You know, so, and this is what the kids are starting to realise as well. You know, it takes us all to come together and we've got to bring, break that stigma. Yeah. The stigma is a major thing between our kids and the police, you know, and that's where we stepping in now and trying to break that. So the kids can get trust back in the police and the police can get trust back in the kids. And then maybe we won't have so many kids being stopped and searched, being dragged up by the police. You know, these are all the kind of areas that we're trying to prevent and trying to build back with the police, with the kids. What is the what is your next big goal to achieve within um, what you're trying to do individually? Or Our together? next big goal together yeah. is we're hoping to have a project in the library um, over the next up and coming weeks, months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Get as many kids as we can off the streets. That's what educate I was them. Say. Yeah. Educate them. Teach them better. Yeah. Show them there is more to life than this road life. Mm -hmm. Money ain't everything. Mm -hmm. Life is worth more. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my main aim for um, Forever 50 is to reach out as many kids as we can. Get them off the streets. Provide better. Get the youth off the streets. I would agree with. That's what the one thing that I would I'm really fond about. Because I know what the roads can lead down to. Mm. But also to like kind of have a more awareness about what we're doing like we're forever 15 as ricky vintage as a brand as well the music of poetry to really be that person do you know what i mean and for people to see what we're doing and come in and talk to your friends and this in person and then just to make what we're doing the next big thing in birmingham you know and network and communicate with other companies in birmingham to, before we go to other cities around yeah. the uk so because we have always said we're not going to just stop at Birmingham because it's not just Birmingham where we've got kids dying mm. you know I'm originally from down south my mum was my mum's a cockney mm. and we moved here like when I was young because I come from a gypsy background you know so like I've got a lot of family still down south I've got friends and family in Nottingham and Liverpool and other con and other cities so we've always said we're not just stopping at Birmingham. Birmingham mm. is our first city mm. that we're going to help and get the kids off the road and build something Start for them safe. But then once we built it here, mm -hmm. we're taking it all up and down the country. The yeah. We're taking it. Yeah. Forever 15 yeah. is going to be a whole UK thing. Everything. You know, because we got kids dying at 15. Mm -hmm. we got kids going to prison at 15. Mm -hmm. Looking 15, 20, 25, 30 years. And it's not just here. Mm -hmm. So next year, we're aiming to build up Birmingham more and branch out as much as we can. Branch out and take over the whole of the UK. Let's get all these kids yeah. off the streets together. <laughs> yes. 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 And that's yeah. what it is. We're just yeah. trying to work together mm -hmm. to build better. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing that whole journey. Hopefully, 
we can get you on again for another episode. You I told me about to. all the changes you've made. Hopefully, we have a few storm more stories could change a bit more positive mm-hmm. but um i think that will be us for today oh, um, thank you it was nice having you on the show thank, thank you, you for having thank me you. thank you for having us oh, yeah. it, man. Thank you. don't forget to follow us on social media on point wm and hashtag thrivecasters join us next time for more conversations that matter to you